Well, name calling and battles over which candidate would best fight terrorism dominated the GOP debate last night in Las Vegas. Did you catch any of this? Did you watch it? We were at a Christmas party. We were at a so. Christmas party and instead of watching this, but they were calling this one the Christmas dinner debate. Yeah. Uh, the Republican hopefuls really tried to make it count. The Republican presidential hopefuls all said they had a plan to stop ISIS and keep America secure, but as expected, the candidates clashed. Donald, you know, is great at at the uh, one-liners, but he's a chaos candidate, and he'd be a chaos president. He would not be the commander-in-chief we need to keep our country safe. Jeb doesn't really believe I'm unhinged. He said that very simply because he has failed in this campaign. It's been a total disaster. Nobody cares. Senator Ted Cruz has picked up steam in recent polls in Iowa and spent much of his time taking on fellow Senator Marco Rubio, mostly on their voting records on immigration and national security. As far as Ted's record, I'm always puzzled by his attack on this issue. Ted, you support legalizing people who are in this country illegally. Ted Cruz supported a 500% increase in the number of H-1B visas, the guest workers that are allowed into this country, and Ted supports doubling the number of green cards. It is not accurate what he just said, that I supported legalization. Indeed, I led the fight against his legalization and amnesty bill. Carly Fiorina says neither candidate is up to the task. To wage war, we need a commander in chief who has made tough calls in tough times and stood up to be held accountable over and over, not first term senators who never made an executive decision in their life. Meanwhile, Donald Trump walking back on hints that he was considering a third party run. Uh, I am totally committed to the Republican Party. I feel very honored to be the front runner. Reporting from Las Vegas, I'm Diane Gallagher. Hi, so I, I think that after following last night's debate, there mm. really was no big uh, earth shattering, um, no. you know, it, nothing it, to sway somebody from one candidate to the other. Here in Texas, Ted Cruz came out strongly against legalization of, of illegal immigrants who are already here in the state. So, so he stirred up a little bit with that. Here in his home state and across the country. I'm surprised we didn't see more of the two, the Cruz and Trump head head because clashing, that's which what I think we a lot of them, expecting. a lot of the media were hoping. I we're think, for really that, hoping so. that that was going to go. And uh, you know, I don't know if Rubio came out in the full force that his supporters were hoping. Hmm. We'll see if it has any effect on the polls. Absolutely, that's the teller. Hey, today FBI Director James Comey stated that the shootings at a Navy Reserve facility in Chattanooga back in July, if you remember that, were inspired by terrorists. Yeah, this is a big deal. Now he made these comments at a press conference today in New York, and he confirmed to the media that uh, Mohammed Abdozuli's actions were motivated by foreign terrorist organization propaganda. He also stated that the FBI has been investigating those shootings as a terrorism case from the very beginning. His comments on the Chattanooga shootings come after President Obama cited those Chattanooga shootings along with the recent San Bernardino attacks as terrorist incidents, uh, but didn't elaborate. So he just kind of mentioned them together, but, but didn't go into a lot of detail. So Comey's comments marks the first time that a U.S. official has provided details on why these shootings are thought to be terrorist acts. So we're just seeing a little bit of, of their thinking behind that. So while Comey said that the Chattanooga killer was inspired by foreign terrorists, it, you know, it's still hard to determine exactly which terrorist group that the shooter was actually motivated by. We do know that President Obama is going to be visiting San Bernardino uh, here soon um, in regards to what happened in California. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I'm sure there's strategic reasons to why they don't release this information quicker. Um, sure. But I think I, as a citizen, I feel better. And I feel like that should have come out a little bit sooner. I agree. If they're considering the T word, if we're talking about terrorism, I would like to know sooner right. rather than later. Uh, but I, you know, there are other parts of me. I assume that there are good reasons they keep yeah. it under wraps. At least you hope so. Sorry. Let's uh, move on to something a little bit lighter. Google yeah. recently <laughs> released its annual roundup of the top, th the top things that people <laughs> search every year. So uh, we kind of go through this and it, it helps kind of uh, let us look back at 2015 right. and figure out what were people most interested in. I think you might find some of these as a surprise. Yeah, some Maybe. of these are real interesting. <laughs> top five searches of 2015 were Ronda Rousey, Caitlyn Jenner, American Sniper, Jurassic World, and Lamar Odom ah, at number right. one. Those top breaking news stories, you got Paris attacks, the Oscars, Nepal earthquake, Volkswagen emissions, and water on Mars. Okay, now the top searched uh, deaths were Bobby Christina Brown, Stuart Scott, Sandra Bland, Freddie Gray. Also interesting, the top five questions that people were looking for on Google is, 
What is zero divided by zero? What is Ashley Madison? What is a Buckeye? Well, and what is the Charlie Charlie challenge? What is the Charlie Charlie challenge? I, I honest, honestly, I don't know. Well, apparently we have to ask Google. <laughs> I also am not sure that I can answer that. Alex, zero do you know what that zero. is? I'm asking our producer. Do you yeah. know what the Charlie Charlie, What's the Charlie, challenge, Charlie challenge, challenge is? Oh, kids try to summon demons. Okay. Oh no, <laughs> that's one of those sleepover things. Everybody gets scared and pulls out the flashlight. I've never heard that in my and life. Me neither, right. and I never want to hear right. about it again. Well, the results, all, it also showed that people are Googling things like calorie counts, fast food restaurants, yeah. and the difference between uh, some of the presidential candidates. Yeah, the most Googled 2016 candidates were Donald Trump, big surprise, Bernie Sanders, and Carly Fiorina. All right, uh, let's, uh, speaking of eating and calories and all that. All, all our favorite things. Uh, along with the holiday season comes plenty of calorie packed dishes, every single one of them all out there on the dinner table. So there's, yeah, there's some dietitians in Iowa. They've been putting together a list of what should and shouldn't mm. eat on the holiday dinners, and here's uh, kind of what they come up with. Yeah, holiday tables are often heavy with starches, so dietitians are recommending you just skip the mashed potatoes and go for the veggies. May not taste as good, may not be what you want to hear, uh, but also don't force yourself to eat traditional foods that you don't actually enjoy. For me, I don't really like stuffing. I'm I think, done this, with I think stuffing. this is kind of like a no brainer. Yeah. Uh, common sense here <laughs> avoid stuff like the eggnog, the hot chocolate, they're very high density in calories. Uh, avoid the alcohol. Make sure you pick a lot of lean protein, like the turkey, ham. Um, since you don't get those on a regular basis. So I shouldn't eat 12 rolls <laughs> with every meal. Not, not a good idea. Not, not today. I gotta not say, not that's, that's my favorite part. It's also helpful if you choose just one thing to indulge in. So just pick your favorite and go for that one instead of eating a whole lot of- Moderation, uh, of, that's of what it all is. The thing. Moderation, it always Absolutely. comes down to moderation. Hey, if you thought that uh, something's missing this season, maybe like the flu, like no. there's not a flu season, you're not imagining things, but doctors are saying, don't let your guard up, it's coming. We're gonna talk more about that in our house call segment right after this.